views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow, everyone. Welcome. It's so great. So great to be connecting with all of you out there. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show, Talk Radio to Thrive By. And of course, welcome to uh, Transformation Talk Radio and much more. It's so great to be connecting with all of you that tune us in and turn us on. It is amazing. And Mr. Benny is back in the chair. Hello, Mr. B. I am back in the saddle again. Thanks, Pat. Uh, Well-deserved couple of days off there. It was nice. It was like a week, wasn't it? Uh, four days, including the weekend. So, yeah, about uh, that. Yeah. And, you know, then you got to get up and you got to get back to work. Yeah, but and... that's not a big deal. It was just getting back into the sad. I, I just needed a little bit of a break. And, uh, you know, the boys break. need to get to school. So there's priorities, yeah. you know, that need to be done. So we took care of it. So I got a burning question for you. Oh, okay. Okay. Did you sleep in? No. Now. You know, we know we all know what time you get up just to come in here and do this, and we're very grateful. Yeah. Were you um, able to sleep in, or did your clock, your internal clock, go up and say, "Get up anyway"? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, let's see. The first <laughs> couple of days, it was definitely the three three thirty when I just kind of pop oh. up and I lay there, and I'm like, "Okay, you know, you have a good three more hours until the boys <laughs> start getting up." And so I laid there, and I I drifted back a couple times, but then I would just lay there. And I'm like, oh, "I'm up. I'll just go watch some TV or do something." Or, you know, ah. go pick up the leaves in the backyard. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's good to have you back. And good Sarah to be back. Filled Thank you. In, did a great job filling she in. She did. That's what I've been yep. hearing. Yep. And, uh, you know, this is really what we do. You know, it, it is like taking a message out into the world. And, you know, I was doing a little interesting research on the state of affair for uh, state of affairs for talk radio because, you know, uh, we are putting a crowdfunding campaign together. And um, it's really fascinating to see what's happening in this arena, what's happening in this world, especially AM on the dial in the United States. Um, While we seem to be decreasing our programming or programming of this nature or programming of talk radio in general, what's happening abroad is quite the opposite. And, you know, it's 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 kind of like this new idea of talk radio and the kind of talk radio telling stories, sharing information. You know, when you hit countries, when you're when you're getting people, I've got two emails. One is from Belarus and the other one is from I'm just trying to think somewhere over there. I can't think if it is Russia or, you know, I, I don't know. But folks are like, oh, my gosh. I love the show. We don't have anything like that. And so it's fascinating to just be in this world and know that we can speak a few words and share a few stories and, you know, inspire, inspire folks all over the world. And that's what today's show is about as well. You know, I am so thrilled to be, you know, here with Mary Heath. We're going to be talking about Get Your Life Back get your life back you know this 12-week journey to overcome stress anxiety and depression and you know this is something that you know she and I were talking before the show it's kind of like well wait a minute you know here we are we you you write a book you you get out in the world and probably the last thing you think about is that you're going to be speaking with people not just in your own backyard but all over the globe about this And, you know, Mary is someone who has been in the field of stress management 
for quite some time. And, you know, it's really fascinating. She and I will talk about this. I remember back in the day, Benny, where, you know, there were employee assistant programs just starting up and you walked in and you said, you know, this stress thing is going to be a game changer. And the board and the executives would say, that is just not going to happen here. We're not going to do stress management. It's not really a thing. And so today we get to talk to Mary about the thing, which is a real thing. And, and why are we talking about it? What is it out in the world right now, especially in the arena of mental health, like Mary has worked in over 30 years, helping people, patients, you know, as a counselor and a life coach and a therapist, overcome stress, anxiety, and depression. Well, there's something to be said about this. And so today, we get to talk with her about this incredible book she wrote, Get Your Life Back, A 12-Week Journey to Overcome Stress, Anxiety, Depression. And if you don't think this is a mainstream conversation, all you need to do is look at what's happening in the world, at least from the people we point to that have just not been able to handle their lives. Mary, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much. It's uh, great that you've invited me to come on your radio show. Thank you. Well, you know, I, I made a comment, and I really want to. I, w- I really want to talk with you about it for a minute. And you know, it's the comment that I made about, um, okay, when I remember in having a human resources job, right, and having this human resources job, and 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 I remember the first time employee system programs were implemented and the conversation about stress came up and people were uh, boards, executives sitting around the room saying, not on my watch, we're not going to do this. You know, who really cares whether or not we're managing stress? Just suck it up and do your job. And I wanted to ask you, from your point of view, you've seen this, I know. Where were we then? Where are we now? And what do we have to do moving forward in this arena? Well, it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember actually uh, being a child and moving through adolescence and teenagehood, and there never seemed to be any stress anywhere. The word stress was never mentioned. (laughs) And so, you know, going back all of that time, it seems that, you know, in a matter of a very short space of time, that now the whole world has stress and they don't know what to do with it. And uh, some employers, uh, well, they used to ignore it, but now these days, thank goodness, they are having to help their employees if they are suffering from stress, which is a great thing. Uh, But there are very few people out there who actually know what it really is, how it affects them, how it affects their whole lives and their families and loved ones, and more so what to do about it. People are not taught the coping strategies that are necessary to deal with the stress, the amount of stress uh, that we have today. Well, you know, I mean, let's talk about this from, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it's a ter- an eternity ago when we were looking at this arena and really you know, thinking this is never going to really be an issue. Uh, But let's fast forward to where we are and, you know, the degree of uncertainty in the world, certainly the degree of uncertainty in the workplace. You know, but what do you think has been the major contributor from what you've seen in your your clients, in your patients? What has been the major contributor to their increased level of uh, stress, anxiety, and depression? We're going to talk about all three of these, too, so that folks understand the distinction. Yes. Um, well, it's it's such a, a long answer, uh, really. Um, but I think in the last 30, 40 years, there has been so much change in the whole world, particularly in the technology arena. The population has grown, and so there's more pressure to be able to find work and keep work and to be able to to do the work that you're given. And I think more and more demands have been put on people Mm. and the pressure becomes harder and harder as time goes on. And of course, it's it's keeping up with everyone else, uh, comparing yourself to uh, 
uh, how you're doing and uh, how other people are doing what they're achieving and what you're achieving even in schools these days there's there's too much peer pressure pressure comes from not only work but uh, families financial problems uh, particularly these days relationship problems too mm -hmm. and so it, it just seems to me that it's been growing and growing steadily over quite a number of years you, you know one of the things that i think is so important for us to to talk about is you know here we are and you know you're out in the world you've worked with people uh, and now you you know you stepped out and have written a book and i and I was remembering reading in the book you you, you know uh, this idea of wait a minute let 's take a look at twelve week journey what is the twelve week about and you know what is it about taking this approach uh, to de stress ourselves so to speak that you have found so helpful what was it that you know motivated you to decide to take your your experience and come out and say look this is this is a way to this is a way to approach this well during my work um, over many years i found that working in groups was more effective than working on a one to one basis mm -hmm. It helped my patients who were in a group or on a course or on a workshop to realize that they're not alone in, in their suffering, whether it's stress or anxiety disorders or depression. And so I started to devise and facilitate uh, groups or courses, workshops. And I started off with six week courses, which were very successful. But after a little while I thought, there's so much more I could be giving them, I could be telling them, I could be teaching them. And so the six weeks grew to eight weeks. <laughs> and then eventually I thought, well, there's even more now because I became so interested in the subject of stress and its relatives um, that I continued to learn myself. And so the more I learned, the more I wanted to pass on. Eight-week courses were were very, very effective. And I would say that 90% of the clients on the courses recovered completely after eight weeks. When I started to do 12 weeks with more information and more time for them to digest it and practice the skills and techniques, and also, of course, time passing is also a great healer so the more time they were on the course and, and made friends actually with their fellow students after the 12 weeks it was more like 99% of the patients actually recovered fully and were able to be discharged and I never saw them again wow yes so when I came to write the book, actually, it was never meant to be a 12-week course. I had great ideas of, of having a, a skill or a, a tool or a technique um, for every day for a whole year. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually did list 365 skills that, that I could put in a book and then realized, well, that's ridiculous because it would be longer than war and peace. <laughs> so <laughs> I helped to uh, reduce it down. Um, I spoke to uh, my publisher and said, uh, how about 100 days? How does that sound? And uh, she asked me, why 100 days? And I said, well, it's, it's, on average, it took my clients or my patients uh, 12 weeks to recover from stress anxiety and depression disorders so she said well why not do 12 weeks and she said you've based this on courses that you ran and I said yes absolutely and she said well why don't you make it a 12-week course so I thought yes <laughs> yes that's it that's what I need to do and so that's why it's a 12-week journey Wow. And, you know, for people that, you know, are, 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 are tuning in, we're going to be talking uh, with Mary about what stress, what is anxiety, and what is depression, and why is it so important today in our world to address it, you know, and what, what role does behavior play in all of this? 
you know, can we think our way to wellness or do we actually have to do something, something? Let's take a short break. Mary Heath, my very special guest here today. Get your life back, a 12-week journey to overcome stress, anxiety, and depression. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. I was gay, cause I could draw, my uncle was, and I kept my room straight, I told my mom, tears rushing down my face, she's like, Ben, you've loved girls since before pre- The preceding audio was via a Skype call. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit jenroyster.com for more information. The Women of Wisdom Fall Harvest Festival is coming up right around the corner on October 24th from 10.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. with free admission located at the North Seattle Community College in the Conference Center. Festivities include a silent auction, healers, educational booths, delicious food, and a variety of vendors. You won't want to miss this fun-filled event. For more information, visit womenofwisdom.org and we'll see you there. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. The Doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and for a special broadcast the second Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. The following audio is via a Skype call. Oh, no. And I can't change Even if I tried Even if I wanted to Wow, everybody, welcome back. It is so great to have you joining us here today. It's also really super exciting to have Mary joining us here today. You know, for those of you out there, if you want to find out more um, about Mary, Mary, what what is the best website for people to find out more about you? And uh, please let us know how uh, they can get a copy of your book. Um, Yeah, my website address is www.maryheath all one word, no spaces so maryheath.co.uk and they can um, buy uh, a book on the website, there's a link to the publisher, they can buy it uh, from Amazon and and other well known uh, internet bookshops Uh, it should be on sale in the bookshops in the USA uh, very, very shortly, if not already in some. Um, they are on sale here in the UK already. Nice. Nice. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, the book, the approach, and, and, and why this is a handbook as well. But I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, you know, stress, anxiety, and depression, the acronym SAD, S-A-D. Uh, I, the acronym is it, it jumps out it, yeah. on the book cover it kind of jumps out at you but yeah, yeah that was my intention yes <laughs> yeah um, and you know part of the conversation is why this is so sad you know what is it that we're seeing now in the world that is really bringing to the forefront the consequences of stress anxiety and depression right now in the world Well, first of all, it is very sad that so many people are 
actually suffering the effects of stress, anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the reasons is that we're not given the right tools, we're not taught the skills, we, we don't learn coping strategies early enough. I think all of this should be taught in schools, but it's not. And so when people do go down with stress and anxiety disorders and depression, they don't know where to turn. Often a person would go to um, a doctor, a general practitioner, and maybe they would be given uh, an antidepressants, even though they may not necessarily be suffering with depression. De depression is the result of too much stress that is being or not being managed at all. Stress is actually a result of too much pressure that we can't cope with because we don't have the necessary skills and therapies and techniques to deal with it. And so when stress is unmanaged and the pressure becomes even greater because we perceive ourselves not to be managing and to be failing in some some way or not achieving our goals or not not able to do the things that we've done before without any problem and so the worry sets in then and it's a bit of a vicious circle really so the more pressure you're under the more stressed you are the more you worry and then you start to worry about the worry and the fact that you're not coping we yeah. become less efficient, less effective, the higher the pressure goes. In, in my book, there's a, a diagram called the human function curve. And it explains that the right amount of stress, or healthy stress, as I like to call it, is actually very, very good for us. It motivates us, it gets us up in the morning, and it helps us to achieve and behave um, effectively. But if we go beyond our ability to cope, then the stress becomes worse and we become less efficient, as I've already said. But then we begin to have possibly uh, a lot of negative thoughts about what's happening to us, such as, oh my God, you know, I can't do this anymore. There's too much for me to do and there isn't enough time in the day and I'm getting pressure from here, I'm getting pressure from there, from home from work, from my finances. And that is usually where anxiety begins. So the symptoms of anxiety and too much press, uh, too much stress are very, very similar. So the typical ones would be racing heart, palpitations, shallow breathing, sometimes mm -hmm. not being able to breathe correctly. Um, perspiring, uh, feeling jittery, maybe feeling angry and aggressive sometimes, sometimes feeling afraid, scared, and even worse. So now we're at the point of anxiety, and maybe we're not sleeping well, we're not eating well, and so we then become anxious about those symptoms too. So by this time you're thinking, you know, what on earth is happening to me? Where has all this come from? A lot of people don't actually seek help then. A lot of people with uh, the kind of personality that says to them, oh, well, I should be coping. Everybody else is coping, okay. I don't need any help. I can do this. And so it's possible then for general anxiety to turn into a more serious kind of anxiety, such as uh, panic attacks, mm -hmm. maybe even OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, and even in some cases, in some severe cases that, that I worked with, um, even such things as social phobia or agoraphobia, where you, you just can't go out anywhere, and you can't socialize, you um, cut off contacts with, with friends because you're feeling so bad and you don't know why and nobody's telling you why. If, this, if the pressure continues to go on and you still aren't able to cope with it, 
that's often where depression follows. And so by this time, uh, we're in a bad way. And if health isn't sought, then the depression can not always, but sometimes turn into burnout or breakdown, which mm -hmm. is explained in my book. Uh, in other words, uh, a, a, a case of just not being able to cope at yeah. all. Yeah. And, you know, let's talk about this when we come back, because, you know, what you've described is for many people, you know, you're really talk at, you're talking about how the dots get connected in this, you know, how we can start out with a, let's just call it, and I've heard this said before, a little worry. Uh, and, and so a little worry that all of a sudden is not a little worry, you know, anymore. Uh, and it, and then it turns into more than a worry. And as you described it so beautifully, that then turns into an anxiety, which could be a panic attack. And ultimately, you know, what we're hearing so much about in the world today, which is depression, the many, many faces of depression. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about each of these and what the strategy is that Mary has put together to get your life back. And, you know, there's a CD that's included in the book. What, what does the CD help us with? Let's take a short break, everyone. We'll be right back. Preceding audio was via a Skype call. Shine on Radio. Find your shine with Kelly is the show that celebrates what makes you, you. Join co-hosts Kelly Wadler and Dr. Pat Basili as they break down how to brilliantly fuel and move your body and love what makes you shine. Kelly is a professional arts and wellness coach dedicated to helping brilliant women find their confidence, energy, self-love, and shine. Tune in to Shine On Radio with Kelly and find your shine on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and and help keep our mission strong. For the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease, we are not going to let you down. We're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio. The message will continue. The conversations will become stronger and the healing epic. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. 
Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all, a healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. During the month of October, Dr. Darvish and the Holistic Medical Team are promoting Breast Cancer Awareness Month with 25% off breast thermography. Safe, painless, radiation-free, and accurate. Purchase your breast thermography screening for 25% off now until October 31st to receive this special. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. The following audio is via a Skype call. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I'm so, so thrilled to have Mary Heath joining me here today for a lot of reasons. One is, you know, that this is such a very, very important conversation you know, for those of you out there, and, you know, the reason it's an important conversation is because, you know, first and foremost, what happens is we don't really talk about the stresses in our lives. And if we do, you know, we talk about them at a point in time where it is probably beyond, beyond the point of of really um, stepping in and neutralizing some of the damage, some of the consequences. So what Mary has done is she said, look, we can take this on. We can get our lives back, you know, whether it's stress, anxiety, or depression. This 12-week journey to overcome these is something that she, with over 30 years in mental health, you know, has helped people with. And, you know, so what is it that we can learn about ourselves, our lives, and what can we do about it? Mary, again, thank you so much. First of all, I love the book, and let me tell you why. I'm one of these folks that I need a few diagrams, I need a few pictures. And I love that you've got pictures in here, diagrams in here, and you've made it super easy for people to take a look at what it is we're referring to in our lives. You know, it's one of the questions you ask, and I can't remember what page. You give an exercise. This is so fun. I'm all over this. You give an exercise and you say, you make a sign and make the sign and say, does it really matter? Make a sign. Does it really matter? I love that you have tips and tools like this. Now, here's the question. Does it really matter? And you and I, during the break, I was saying to you that, you know, we've gone through in in, in in most people have gone through the past eight years one of the more difficult eras in at least the life that I've lived you know I thought when the 90s came and we decided to repeal you know the psychological contract of employment where employment you know wasn't going to be this thing that you got I thought for sure that was a tough time but what's happened for folks here in this past and I will say decade has been devastating and there is not a lingering conversation about wow did that just happen to us it's like let's pick ourselves up let's go get the new car let's go buy the new house as if nothing actually happened and how does outside influences like the economy, how, how do these kinds of things affect us as individuals? You know, where do we even go with that conversation about let's pick ourselves up and just march forward as if nothing has happened? Well, of course, it is a tragedy that um, so many people throughout the world um, have suffered great losses and You know, I'm not just talking about losing jobs or losing businesses, uh, but it's about losing faith as well, uh, losing hope, uh, losing support. All of these things are major, major stresses. And whilst we're going through the states of uh, poor economy, we're also having the ordinary everyday what you might call uh, trivial stresses, but they are still there. And and really, this is why I used to get people to make these signs for themselves. Does it really matter? Because yes. there are so many big stresses out there that really it, it, it's very helpful if you can put things into perspective and not cry over the spilt milk. You know, d- don't get in, in a mess because you miss the train. You know, Things like that sometimes don't actually matter. 
But if you're already suffering with anxiety and depression, then everything matters. And so with the state of the economy and you know, on top of the, the major stresses like bereavement, divorce, uh, illness, whether it's yourself or, or a loved ones, you know, all of these need to be handled with great care. And so the, the does it really matter sign really matters <laughs> because we wouldn't be able to cope with all of those things. And so it's a matter of prioritizing what your stresses are and, and where you need to be applying the coping strategies that are in my book. And I have to say that um, my book isn't, well, it's, it's absolutely not a textbook. Let's start with that. It, you know, it, it's not just for clinicians. M my book is actually for everyone, even for those people who feel, well, they're not really stressed, but they'd like a bit of oomph in their life. You know, they'd like to uh, get on with their lives a little bit easier. They, they, you know, people who feel that, um, well, life isn't really as it should be. I've not achieved very much. So it's for those people as well. But going back to the the major external stresses and how to deal with them. There are many ways to deal with those major stresses. If you've lost your job, if you've lost your business, if someone close to you has died or you, you're parted from someone, it's not just a matter of saying, right, well, I'll go to yoga classes and I'll learn yoga and then everything will be all right. Of course, yoga classes will help enormously. But when there's so much stress in your life that has already turned into anxiety, panic attacks, burnout, and depression, then you, le you need a lot more therapy. And not everyone can get it. Certainly in the UK, it's not easy. Uh, because of the state of the economy, um, you know, there isn't enough therapy out there for everyone. And so... I know people here have to wait a very, very long time before they can get just six sessions, six sessions of cognitive behavioral therapy when they have all these major and minor stresses and are feeling very, very unwell. And so what I've done in my book, I have put a whole comprehensive and eclectic selection of easy to follow coping strategies, tools and techniques that anyone and everyone can benefit no matter how high their stress levels are or how low their depression is. If they follow the course, the 12 week course, and they put into practice, um, I'm not saying all of the the skills and techniques. There are one or two that may be not applied to, to certain people. Right. Uh, so, for example, if you're not having panic attacks, then you don't necessarily need to know how to manage a panic attack, if you know what right. I mean. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but you but have to be where... able to recognize them, Mary. I mean, isn't yes. this really the issue? You know, well, okay. L let me ask you it, what the, the re one of the real underlining issues might be that doesn't get talked about you know a friend of mine I, it called me out on an analogy I used the other day and I said you know it used to be and this is just me maybe you can correct me if I go off on a tangent here which I tend to do sometimes but okay. you know okay well you know it used to be at least the way I used to look at my life the first part of my life the you know first half of my life was was like the frog analogy but I was the frog back then that if you know you took the frog and you pop that frog into boiling water I would jump out because I got it you know I got it I knew when something was too hot to handle yeah. or even if I knew it was too hot to handle I made a conscious decision how it's going to move forward in life right you know whether it was going to be jumping from an airplane of course with a parachute um, or <laughs> you know, simply deciding I was going to go back to school, which was equally as scary, by the way, for somebody like me. But then, you know, all of a sudden now, this is like, I'm looking at certain things now that are happening in the world and happening to individuals and groups. And it's the other analogy. 
it's like, wait a minute, the water's not really hot. It's actually cold, and I'm kind of comfortable in here, and slowly the heat's getting turned up. And before I know it, I don't, I don't even notice that my boiling point of stress, anxiety, and depression, sad as you called it, is now at volcanic proportion, and oopsie, I'm French fried. And yeah. so this is really kind of the difference, I think, between, you know, what might be going on in the world today and what was going on 30 years ago when you first pop, you know, when you first decided this is the work you're going to do. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Am I like over, am I over, is this an over dramatization? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. I, I, I really like your analogy. I, I'm a great one for using metaphors myself. Okay. <laughs> um I think the first thing I, I want to say in answer to that is that each and every one of us is a unique individual. And I know that this really doesn't need to be said, but it perhaps needs to be pointed out to some people that we are all different. We all have had different experiences of life. Uh, we've all grown up in not only different countries and different cities and different towns, but in different uh, households with different parents and siblings. We've had different teachers. And so every single one of us will have a completely different set of beliefs and values and attitudes and opinions and so on. Mm. And we form our um, personality type when we're very young. And so if, say, you had uh, very, very strict parents, who said, you know, come on, you must work harder, your grades, you know, have to be perfect all of the time. This is just an example. Yeah, it's a good example. You, you may grow up to be um, afraid uh -huh. of not achieving, and you may have unrealistic expectations of yourself because maybe that parent had unrealistic expectations of you. Mm -hmm. And very often anxiety sets in at this early stage. And what it does to us is it, it gives us quite low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And we, we then go on to lack confidence in ourselves. And so um, as a result of this, some people will find it very difficult to make decisions in case they make the wrong decision. <laughs> And uh, when it comes to life choices, you know, because these are major life choices, you know, what am I going to do for the, for the next 30 years? Yeah. It, it's difficult. Of course it is. And if there's no one there to uh, help and support you through these decisions, then the stress will just build up. And you may make a decision and, and go down one path only to find that maybe it's not the right path for you. But you know what? Every single experience is worth having. I believe, in one sense, that there's no such thing as a bad decision. So if you decide to, to go down one route and it doesn't work out, that's okay. You will have learned something, even if it's just, well, that was the wrong way to go. <laughs> I need to try something else now. Well, you know, what I love about this conversation is that, you, you know, we're bringing to the forefront something that I think is so important. And I have to tell you, when when my friend said to me, and you know, it's a mutual friend of ours, you know, said to me, you, you got to write that book, you got to resurrect and pull that, you know, pull that thing off of the shelf. I went to, I almost had a post-traumatic, well, not almost, I did. I had a post-traumatic stress attack. And why is it? That was 10 years of research, 1,200 pages of interview notes, speaking with people who, who, who grew up with the American dream, if I might say, yeah. and, you know, whose lives, they can no longer make sense of it. You know, they can no longer make sense. If not this, then what? And levels and feelings of betrayal. What do you think, you know, now fast forward, you, you know, you've got 30 years under your belt working with people like every day. You know, I, I, I know you had to write this book. Otherwise, that, that had, this had to be the key to your own self-help sanity here. But <laughs> what, 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 when I d looked at that and I thought, man, you know, can I actually revisit, you know, the agony, the pain that people experience? Now, that's just me, Mary, right? That's me looking at other people's lives, right? Mm. 
what might what are folks what is your sense that folks are really going through right now are we willing to look back and deal with our stress anxiety or depression are we ready to do that i think it's not a case of looking back i think it's a case of looking forward actually oh that see now i knew that was my problem right right there <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling me out on that, but you're absolutely right. <laughs> well, it's okay. It's okay to to glance at the past. Um, obviously, when I wrote the book, I had to think and uh, remember what what I'd done with people and how I'd helped them. And so, yes, I think recalling things from the past is fine as long as you don't stay there. Uh, I think it's about motivation as well. You know, maybe you you need to ask yourself, um, well, what would motivate me to write this book? What what would be the outcome? What could I achieve from it? How could I help other people? And I think that's the, that was the main thing with me. Um, so many people to, uh, said to me, um, oh, you you should write a book because there are so many things and we can't remember them all and you you know there's all these skills that you have uh, yeah. just put in a book and so it's it's the same thing for you Pat I think it would be um, a shame uh, a, a tra- well yeah a tragedy really for you not to publish the thing the knowledge that you have. You know, you sound just like our mutual friend. You know, and 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 I and I thank you for saying that. And 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 you know, for the most part, that's why you had to write this book, didn't you? I mean, this this I love this book because first of all, it's fun, even though the title says sad. I love the way you've written this book, though, Mary. I mean, you've yeah. taken on some of the what I think is some of the most powerful, powerful forms of emotional, psychological, and behavioral, uh, 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 what I like to call, you know, areas for improvement. And you've given us a toolkit, but this had to really call upon every conversation you probably ever had, right? (laughs) Yes, Yes, and there were many, I assure you. I know. I wonder, do you have a therapist? (laughs) (laughs) You know, when I was was studying and... um, and learning, I read a lot of books, mm. and most of them were textbooks, and a lot of them were very boring <laughs> because it was just words. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier that you like to see pictures and diagrams yes, and tables and so on, and that's what I wanted. And I also believe that we all learn in a different way, mm. and I think you know to some people they might skim over the diagram because they you know doesn't mean anything to them but for other people they need it spelled out in a drawing and i wanted to put some fun in it i I wanted to put cartoons in it i wanted more actually but the publisher said there were too many pages to put them all in um what were we saying uh Well, well you get to write a second book though (laughs) <laughs> I mean, that, that's what you get to do. But you know what I love about this book? And for those of you out there, you know, I'm telling you, not only is this a great book for an individual to do, but isn't this a great book? I, well, I don't know if this was your intention, but I can see sitting down and doing this with a group of people. I mean, I could see this being, you know, a book club book where people get to do this together because you have literally – you know, taking people step by step by step. You know, I looked at this one diagram you got in the book, Mary. And I did. They should have told you that I actually do read the books. But I looked <laughs> at this one diagram you got in the book, and it said time time taken to reduce anxiety. And I'm trying, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at that book, and I'm thinking, oh, oh my goodness, <laughs> Mary has done her homework on this. Um, I want to ask you a couple of questions because not only is this beautiful, but, you know, this whole thing about how panic attack happens, the diagram you put together on that, it yeah. was so absolutely common. I don't want to, this is not an insult, put in a way of common sense that anybody could pick this up and look at it. And that's the problem exactly. today with most books out there. People cannot even make sense of what you're saying. Exactly. And I wanted to ask you about this. If that was your point, though, wasn't it? Exactly my point, because, you know, over the years, I had every kind of person sitting in front of me, whether it was one-to-one or in a group. 
And so I would have maybe uh, in the same group uh, an unemployed person, uh, a housewife and mother, um, and a chief executive officer of a major company, and they'd all be in the same group. And um, I had to um, address my audience in a way that everyone could understand it and apply the, the tools and techniques, but also um, understand where I was coming from with it all. And so my book is, is, is yes, you're right. I, people could actually turn it into some sort of workshop. I, I agree. Um, and I wanted people to be able to understand it without having to go back over the page and read it all again. Yeah. And I think I said earlier that it is for everyone, you know, uh, n not for, um, uh, not necessarily just for people with stress and depression. No. Can I ask you a question? I know we're running out of time here and it's unfortunate because, you know, there's so much to talk about. The thing I was really struck by with this is how applicable this would be. I mean, I, I don't know if you've been following the news on some of the things that have been happening here, the the recent, you know, disaster, yes. you know, horrific issue, you know, shootings in school. Yeah. When I looked at this, I thought, what a great tool for children. What oh, a great absolutely. tool. Yeah, I mean, I have said in my book that my, my dream would be that um, stress management and relaxation and um, maybe meditation and so on uh, is taught in every school across the world. Um, I have made some inroads into you know the area where I live, mm. uh, but I, I it is so important that we learn how to handle stress and understand what it is. You know, so if you're having um, your heart racing and your mouth is dry and you're perspiring, you, you may think, oh my God, I've got some dreaded disease. Uh, but in actual fact, it is uh, anxiety that can be put right very, very simply, just, just with a breathing exercise or changing the way you're thinking about it. You know, thinking about things in a different way. Um, but yes, if it was taught to young children, we wouldn't have half the problems that we have today yeah. with stress wow. and anxiety and so on. Wow. Thank you so much for, you know, thank you so much for the show today. Thank you so very much. Oh, would you take you a moment? Much. Yeah, please take a moment if you would. And I would love for you to tell folks how they can get a copy of the book, how they can find out more about you. And, you know, I am so eager to go through and continue this. I've already started it. But it's so very, very cool and a powerful, fun tool. Thank you. Please give out that information, and thank you for joining us here today. Well, thank you. It's been a real pleasure. I really enjoyed your interview. Thank you very much. And I hope if the book helps just one person, then, you know, it's all worthwhile. Um, you wanted me to say how to get the book and find yes, out about it? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. So, again, go to my website, maryheath.co.uk. There's lots of information on there. There are other interviews posted. Um, it's all about me and my background, uh, what's in the book, how it can help, all the many different strategies and coping techniques, a whole list of, of things there. You can buy the book by just you know clicking on a link to the publisher, or you can buy it from Amazon and in the bookshop soon in the USA. The CD has all the breathing exercises on and just one of the relaxations. I haven't been able to talk about the, uh, the breathing exercises, but just to say now very quickly, they are very, very powerful. They yeah. really do control anxiety, fear, panic attacks, nervousness, and, and so on. So you can get the CD. It's separate from the book, but you can buy the CD from the same places. Wow. Thank you so very much for today. Get Your Life Back, a 12-week journey to overcome stress, anxiety, depression. Mary Heath, my very special guest today. And thank you so much, Mary, for all that you do. And we will get you a copy of this interview so you can put that up on your website as well. Oh, that would be great. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. All right, everybody. We're going to take a short break. We're not done. I hope you're getting ready to de-stress today. We'll be right back with the Dr. Pat Show. 